Good morning, everyone. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. Welcome to the channel if you're brand new. If you have a look around here, we're in the midst of winter, obviously, and we've got an abundance of trees around me. And these trees are what I often use with my sawmill behind me to make into beautiful lumber for my projects. If you have a look at some of my projects, I've got this shed and the one behind it and that one. Those are just a small fraction of the things that I build with all of these trees and that sawmill. Now that sawmill I'm referring to, if we come up a bit closer, that's my uh, HM130 Max by Woodland Mills. Now this is the biggest model that they currently sell. This is set up in order to cut a 10 foot, six inch log. Now this is called the Woodlander trailer. You can get a Woodlander XL trailer that goes with that sawmill. That'll extend it out all the way up to about 16 foot, 11 inch log you can cut. Well, I've been dreaming about that for some time. I wanted to start with this Woodlander trailer, see how I could get along, see how much lumber I could cut with it. But the truth of the matter is I want to cut just a little bit longer material. Hence why these two boxes are here today. And as some of you may have guessed, yes, I've added an extension or at the very least, I'm about to add an extension. Now the extension is going to bring me right to the end of this shed here. I know that because I've actually had an older version of this. I had a 2017 HM130 in this exact position oh, a few years back and well, it had an extension on it. So I know exactly how much space it's gonna take up. What you're looking at in the boxes here, one of these boxes is the actual track extension. So this part up here and the other box is the trailer extension. Obviously, with this sawmill being on a trailer, I need to have a track and trailer extension. Hence, uh, what we're going to do today. We're going to try to install this. I'm hoping it goes well. If you're looking at buying this, that's exactly what you're getting. If you want an extension with the Woodlander XL size trailer, that box and that box were right around 77 inches, I think, for the longest box here. Just, uh, just a bit over six and a half feet. Not too terribly big, not too terribly heavy, and... Well, uh, I assembled this. I think it's going to be uh, just about the same in order to add the extension on. So that's what we're up against today. Glad you're all here to join me. Here we go. All right, let's see what we got in the box here. This will be the very first time for me as well to see what's in here. Got our packaging material on this one. And what do we got here? It looks like two jacks there. Probably the uh, exact same as these jacks back here, I'm assuming. Two of those. Got a jack handle in here. Looks like we got some cross braces. You guys can see there some cross braces. Probably identical to the ones that are there and then whatever's in these boxes and looks like we've got our What's that installation kit right there? So that's the trailer extension and this box Will be the Sawmill bed extension Yep, okay and Don't laugh I forgot a knife I was using a screw Cut the boxes open. All right, there's our feet. Now, I don't need these feet. These are for if you don't have a trailer. Oh, looks like we got our big box of hardware, or big bag of hardware. One thing I'm noticing here that you guys will appreciate as much as I do, I'm sure. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing right there. So you guys can see all the hardware. It's uh, individually bagged. And it's also got a, a indicator on there what size it is. That's really important to me because when I'm assembling this, I'm reading the instruction book and the instruction book will refer to certain size bolts. If I look at a 30 millimeter bolt and I look at a 35 millimeter bolt without measuring it, I can't really eyeball and tell what the difference is unless they're side by side and I see one's bigger. Handy right there, I tell you. It's going to save me a bit of a headache. We got here some nuts and hardware I pulled out. Oh, look at that. There's the installation I'm assuming for that one. Got our bunks right there. 
Those are looking nice. I like having that uh, stainless piece on the top. The logs slide nice on it. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, those must be a uh, log clamp. That's what it's shaped like. Yep, and it's just repeated here, and that's good. They even give us some extra, some extra log stops, which is great. Obviously, we're extending the sawmill. We want to have extra log stops. That looks like a uh, bracket in order to bolt the sections together. So, looking pretty sharp here. I'm looking forward to putting this together. I'll finish getting it unboxed, and we'll start uh, getting the wrenches out. All right, well, here's the first little installation instructions, and this is for the trailer extension kit. And you guys can see it's not all that complex. It's literally one page here, and it shows you what uh, hardware goes where, and then you can see the hardware listed in the table. And looks like on the back here, it shows you all the parts that comes with the extension. So that's kind of handy, not a huge novel to read. I'm pretty sure I can handle that. And this must be the actual trailer, it's not, excuse me, not the trailer, the sawmill extension. Let's see what we're dealing with here. This one's in color. Okay, there we go. And this is the first time I've ever seen it as well. So you can see very similar setup. Picture what it should look like, which is nice. Shows me all the hardware. Color coordinated, that's kind of neat. Uh, table, and that's it. Okay, so I guess what we're gonna do, we're probably gonna start off with getting everything laid out. And uh, once it's laid out, then I just gotta get the right hardware, which it tells me, and then we'll bolt her together. Okay. And then one's there, one's here, one's here. And here's where those labels come in handy. So M10 by 40 millimeter, number 12. So I need that. And I need, according to this, and basically how this thing works here, <clears throat> I'm just looking at the bolts, and you can see it says number 12. Then I read it off the table. Number 12 says hex bolt flange M10 by one and a half 40 millimeter LG. That corresponds to the label in the bag. And the other bag I need immediately is number 10, which says 30 millimeter. Which are those right there. And then the nuts, there's only one bag of nuts. Looks like they're all there. And so that at the very least gets me going.
So that'll go in there. This will go in there. And I'll show you guys as soon as I get this put into place. <clears throat> and so that's how that goes. And if you're wondering why this sticks out a little bit, what ends up happening when I put this assembled piece in place on the sawmill is this isn't just a tack on onto the end. What happens is the first section on the existing sawmill trailer, it actually gets disconnected. That section becomes the very end. This new section goes in its place. So essentially those sections are swapping like this. So you'll see the trailer continue on that way when it's fully installed. This actually goes, let's see here. That actually goes like that. Is that right? Yeah, that goes like that. Like that. Okay. Uh, that's good, that's good. I think what we'll do, it calls for a whole bunch of 30 millimeter bolts to basically go in here. And this is what will also hold the track onto the trailer. These uh, nuts as well, they're all nylock. I think that's what you call them. They have that nylon insert. That way they're not gonna, they're not gonna come loose on you after you tighten them down. Alright guys, well the plan now is to basically unbolt. You guys see where the trailer seam is right there? That separates the front section and then the mid section. I'm going to unbolt these bolts on the right side or the front side of that section. So all these are going to come undone here, including these. And what's going to end up happening is that section of the, of the trailer, it's going to go in front of this section. What you're also going to notice is when I take this section of the trailer off, you're going to be left with a little bit of overhang of just the track rails like this right here. This track rail will stay here. This bunk will end up going back. Well, actually that bunk will end up going forward, but you get the point. There'll be another bunk right here once that trailer comes up and uh, that's what we're going to be left with. Another thing you'll notice here, there's lots of slack with the wire loom and so it's going to allow me to run that extension on the trailer and not have any problems. So I'm using an impact driver here just to make things fast. One thing I gotta make sure is that I leave this jack in place. I don't unbolt it on this side because I want this obviously to hold the weight of the trailer as well.
Okay, guys, I think we're at the point now where I can separate the old trailer from the old track. And then once this lower trailer section is slid this way, what I'll do is I'll try to get the new trailer section slid that way. So essentially the old one and the new one, we're going to go like this. And they're going to swap places. That's at least the goal. What I've got at this point is this section of trailer down here on both sides, including this and the tongue. I'm hoping I can slide it forward as soon as I take out these last two bolts right here. These last two bolts are just sort of connecting that trailer to the old, to the old uh, track. And so I'll take those out, slide her forward. Before I do that though, I think I'm gonna slide the new one back a little bit. And hopefully this goes smoothly. We'll find out if we missed any bolts in a moment. So you guys will start to see the plan here if it doesn't make sense yet. That'll go like that. That's probably right about where it needs to go. Maybe something like that. <clears throat> Maybe what I'll do, I'll get a board just in case when I pull it, I have something to, to set it on. Be right back. I might have to loosen off two bolts there. I wasn't quite sure. Feels like it wants to come forward. I just don't want it to slam down. Almost there. I think we're in business.
All right, guys, let's take stock of where we're at here. And so obviously I have the trailer extension fully assembled. I just have to go ahead and put the tracks from the actual sawmill on it. That wasn't all that difficult. There were some steps that if you guys are doing this at home, you might do it just a little bit differently. One of which was attaching this end section. Now this is the old end section that used to sit right here. You saw me slide it over top of the new section that I built. And then in order to get that, uh, that old section, which is now the end section into place, I use this strap here to take the weight of the tongue. Now you could just as easy take that tongue piece off that tubular steel piece with the, uh, with the hitch on the end with the coupler that's actually got some weight to it so if you take that off that'll make that end piece quite a bit more manageable i just thought you know what because i'm inside the shed here i got a strap i have a cross member up there i would just use the strap to hold it parallel and then i was able to slide it right into place so that's what you see right now i'm at the point now where i'm switching over to the uh, track extension for the sawmill and so those tracks are going to sit right up top here and uh, then we'll bolt it into place now one thing you just got to wrap your head around is that the seams in the track, right, the sawmill track, the seams do not line up with seams in the trailer. They, they're actually staggered and I'm, I'm sure that gives some of the uh, trailer its strength, some of the sawmill Woodlander XL here the, the strength. But just get that through your mind as you're building it that no seam on the sawmill track or the trailer will line up, they'll be staggered. and then you'll probably be able to get it put together quite easy. So let's put the track on, we'll bolt her into place and we'll call her good. Here we go. What do you guys think? I had to step out of the trailer because have a look at that. That is quite a bit bigger than what I'm used to. That right there is going to be able to cut lumber that's 16 feet 11 inches long. 
Now, what I was used to just a short while ago was having the Woodlander trailer with my HM130 Max, and that was maxed out, no pun intended, at 10 foot, five inches in length. Now I'm at 16 foot, 11 inches. That's gonna open up the door for a whole bunch more material. And it's also gonna make cutting material like eight footers or 10 footers even that much easier. Cause when I roll them up there, they don't have to be perfectly centered. If it's a little bit further this way, a little bit further that way, no problem. I'm still gonna be able to cut it. Now, this was the very first time that I saw those two boxes and I'm talking about those two over there. I have never seen the track extension for the HM130 Max. I've never seen the trailer extension before. I opened up the instructions, I read it, just like you guys would. I'd say it was pretty straightforward. Obviously, I had the tools handy. I had the uh, socket, the impact driver, wrenches, all that stuff. I had the knee pads as well to keep the knees comfortable. But overall, it went pretty well. Just followed the instructions, followed the pictures, put the bolts in the right spot. Now it's a matter of going back, double checking that everything's tight, making sure it's nice and flat and aligned properly. And then we'll be back to cutting. One thing I am noticing here, this trailer, Excuse me, this uh, shed is 20 feet long. With that extension, the trailer is inside, except the tongue is outside. It's outside by about two feet. So I'm probably gonna end up disconnecting that just by unbolting these two uh, bolts here. Move the tongue, take it off just while I'm sawing inside the shed, put it back on when I trailer. But lots of room for the wiring. You guys can see it here. Lots of room for the wiring all the way down the trailer, both back to front. So that's kind of nice. We got two new jacks here. One thing I'm noticing with the new jacks, there's a uh, removable handle here, which is nice. So I can take it off as I'm cutting and store it away. And then when I need it again, I can put it back. One thing with these jacks as well, I like, see these pins here? They're on a little chain. Small stuff like that is kind of nice. Nothing more frustrating than taking that pin out and misplacing it and then trying to figure out a bolt to go in there. These also, they spiral, or they uh, they rotate rather. So if you are trailering, you uh, don't have to take the jack right off. You can just rotate it so it's parallel to the ground. So real nice that way. Uh, another thing I'll point out here, this wasn't all that complex just because I didn't have to touch a lot of the existing sawmill. So basically from here back, I didn't touch. From here forward, you guys saw me disconnect a small section of the trailer. Here it is right here. So I took that section from back here, and then I put the new section where it was. So we did a little swap -a like that. Just got all the bolts put into place, and away you go. So really looking forward to getting back out here and doing some sawing. Hopefully you guys will join me for that. Now that I have this extra length here, well, I can saw a lot more variety of material. So looking forward to doing that. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put it down below. If you've tackled this project before and you saw something that you think others would benefit from hearing, make sure you share it. We're all a big community here. We all like uh, getting out and sawing, so might as well uh, spread the sawdust, if you will. Guys, you all take care out there. Do me that big favor. Give her the old like -a -roo. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time.